I have been the most transparent president and administration in the history of our country by far. We just went through the Mueller witch hunt. Now the House goes and starts subpoenaing. They want to know every deal I've ever done. I say it's enough. President Trump saying he is done cooperating with investigations, vowing to fight any subpoenas from House Democrats. Newt Gingrich is the author of a new novel, Collusion. The former House Speaker and Fox News contributor joins us now. Uh, Mr. Speaker, always good to have you on the program. Good morning to you. Good to be with you. I want to start first the, with, with the president. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I think he's right. I think he's right. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, it's one thing to say, uh, and people tend to forget this, that when Ken Starr reported on Bill Clinton, uh, he found him guilty, used the word guilty, on 11 different charges. Uh, it's a totally different thing to have somebody do two years of investigation, come back and say there's no proof, there's no criminality, and then suddenly have, on a purely partisan basis, uh, the Democrats jump up and hunt for new things to, get to, to start fighting over. There's no grounds for, as a private citizen for pre-presidential candidate Trump to have to give them all this stuff. And notice what they're going after. They're basically saying, we're going to dig through the family basement until we find something. And I think the president's right to just close it down, tell them to do the best they can, and just ignore them, and have his lawyers fight their lawyers from now to the election. Let the country decide in 2020. Do you want real growth, lowest black unemployment, lowest Latino employment, a real chance to fix health care, or do you want this kind of investigating baloney? Obviously, this is a fight that could end up in the courts. Uh, the, meanwhile, Hillary Clinton, uh, she's got a warning to her own party uh, over impeachment. I mean, she's penned an op-ed published in the Washington Post. The Mueller documented a serious crime against all Americans. Here's how to respond in that, Mr. Speaker. She makes it very clear. Go hold substantive hearings that build on the Mueller report, fill in its gaps. But she says, do not jump to straight up and down vote on impeachment. It won't work. Well, I mean, it won't work. First of all, you know in the Senate, which the Republicans control, that there is zero possibility that they would ever convict. Uh, second, I think for, for Democrats from marginal districts, districts that Trump carried or districts that Clinton barely carried, to have to go back home and explain, you're not working on health care, you're not working on economic growth, you're not working on education, but here is investigative hearing number 73. I think that weakens the chance of reelection. Uh, for an entire class of Democrats who uh, are going to be very uncomfortable if that's how their party's defined. Still, that's not stopping some Democrats running for president, including Eric Swalwell, from saying things like this. Listen. You're no longer maintaining that he is effectively a, quote, Russian asset. No, I, I think he acts on Russia's behalf, and I challenge him to show me otherwise. What does that tell you, Mr. Speaker, about how 2020 is shaping up if Democrats are willing to keep hammering messages like that? Look, we live in the age of the Kardashians. Uh, anybody who wants to pretend that they're a presidential candidate gets to be on TV. They get to uh, shoot their mouth off. They get to say anything they want to say. That doesn't mean the rest of us have to take them seriously. Uh, Trump has been much tougher on Russia than Obama ever was. The sanctions have been much more intense against Russia. Uh, he has stood up to the Russians in a number of cases. We're selling weapons to uh, the Ukraine that Obama would never sell them uh, in order to, to stop the Russians. So I think this idea that somehow uh, there's some secret, invisible uh, relationship is just goofy. Uh, and, but I think, again, you, you have so many Democrats running, and they're so desperate to make noise that they're just going to say a wide range of things that, that have no basis in fact, but gets them through the next interview. But Joe Biden is officially in the race, and, and I'll, I'll read a portion of his statement, um, Speaker. He says, we are in the battle for the soul of this nation, and, and he goes on to directly take on the president in this video launched this morning. Here's Joe Biden. We are in the battle for the soul of this nation. I believe history will look back on four years of this president and all he embraces as an aberrant moment in time. But if we give Donald Trump eight years in the White House, he will forever and fundamentally alter the character of this nation. 
battle for the soul of this nation. He takes on the president in that launch video and doesn't talk a whole lot about his own past and experience. Look, I, look I, first of all, I agree with uh, Joe Biden. Uh, we are in a battle for the soul of the nation. You have uh, Democrats now who favor killing babies after they're born. Uh, you have Democrats who favor allowing uh, terrorists and bombers to vote while they're, while they're in prison. Uh, you have Democrats who are for open borders, letting anybody in who wants to. Uh, you have Democrats who want to take away your right to have private health insurance. Uh, let's go down the list. Uh, this is a fight over the nature of America and the future of America. And the difference is the choice next year is going to be the widest choice maybe in modern times. Uh, and I think Biden is going to find it difficult to navigate because he would like to be just a good old guy, just a general nice person. But everybody on the left is going to say to him, where do you stand on all of these issues? Uh, and he's pretty rapidly going to discover this is a much tougher environment for a Democrat uh, than it was while Barack Obama was shielding him from any kind of hard questions. Can he beat President Trump? Well, conceivably, I mean, if the economy were to go really bad, if the president would have a bad campaign, uh, and, you know, you, you don't know. Look, they just elected a comedian by 73 percent of the vote in Ukraine. Uh, Italy has two populist parties that are in charge of the government, one of which was founded by a comedian. Uh, you, go down, you, go, you go around the world, what you know is people are unhappy. The question is going to be, uh, can the Democrats offer an alternative that people decide is better? Uh, if it's Trump versus perfection, I think President Trump has some problems. If it's Trump versus the most likely Democrats on their ticket, uh, vowing for the things they claim they favor, I think he's going to beat him by a surprisingly big margin. Very interesting analysis. Always a good discussion with you. Former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, Thank author you. of the novel Collusion. Appreciate your time this morning, Speaker. Great. Thanks.